Hi, this is Johan Eberg and welcome to this summary and review of day two of UPW in London, March 2015. I want to share with you, Tony will not be on day two. Some people say, okay, it's really bad that Tony is not there. Uh, and I actually, this is the second UPW in three weeks I do. There was one in New Jersey and now it's uh, this one three weeks after. And what things, I brought two people to the one in New Jersey or New York. I brought six, seven people to the one in New Jersey. And what I noticed was that we, when we had a discussion after day two, the people in the that I brought to New Jersey, they said, okay, day one was much better. But what, what I noticed here that lots of people actually likes day two much better than day one, even though Tony is not there. And, and I personally, I, I like day one better with the firewalk and Tony's intensity and just the focus on state. But Joseph is so good and he's so funny, the guy that runs day two. The strategies that you learn in day two is absolutely amazing. And most people, they're too overwhelmed to just take in all the strategies. But really, they're so good and they're so helpful in everyday life, in influence, in sales, in leadership, in everything. And I'm, I'm going to share with you a couple of them uh, to today in this uh, in this summary. The first thing I'm going to share with you is this this triangle. And what most people don't know is that Tony talks a lot about state, right? And the entire UPW is about state. And you say state is created by what? Your physiology, your focus, and your language slash meaning. And the thing that most people don't realize and they don't notice, and I want you to just write it down, is that there is two more things in this picture. The first thing is a compelling future. And what many people, and especially people that's not happy, what they miss out on is that they don't create consistently con create a compelling future. And this is really interesting because the difficulty and the challenge many people have is like the achiever, if you're the achiever type of person, it's is that, okay, you're constantly in the future instead. The thing is, be in the now, be in the create compelling future, be in the now, create a compelling future, be in the now, create a compelling future. That's the trick. If you go into the past, focus on polishing up what you love about your past, unless you're using it as a drive to change something. something. And the, the fifth thing here is identity, who you really are, and the identity i.e. your blueprint or story that Tony talks about controls just about anything in your life as well. And this, the thing is, that's a really important discussion that most people that go to UPW for first or second time they miss out on is that what's really cool about this is that your strategies and your story change when your state change. And that's just the two fine-tuned thing for most people to notice. Tony talks a lot about this and I completely agree with him that problems are our biggest addictions. It's not sugar, it's not whatever, it's problems. People get addicted to their problems and because they get addicted to their problems, they share them with their friends, they, they focus on them, they get love from having problems. Don't love someone from having a problem. Love someone for being happy. Support them in solving their problem, but don't give them too much love for having the problem. That's the wrong approach. One of the things and the subjects of this, of day two, is creating lasting change. And Tony actually has a program called Creating Lasting Change, which is very good. Uh, and there he goes through seven steps. In UPW, he's taking it down to three steps. And those three steps works on, I would say, anything. Because it's very simple and it works like clockwork. And number one is to get massive leverage and to really understand the pain and pleasure that drives the person. How can you get leverage of what you're helping and influencing the per person to change? Number two is to break the pattern 
consistently break the pattern. And breaking the pattern is like scratching a CD. You scratch it, scratch it, scratch it, and after a while, it's not possible to do what? You're right. It's not possible to read the CD. <laughs> Simple, right? And number three is create a new and empowering pattern and reinforce it until it come, becomes a habit. And those three very simple steps will help you if you do it correctly in a good way to just influence yourself and other people to change the behaviors that they want to change. Or it works perfectly in sales and other leadership situations as well. And there is one final thing I want to share with you. So it says here creating magic. How much magic do you create? I really believe in creating magic. And, and magic is magic moment, magic is creating experiences, magic is creating things, giving other people a better life. And what's addressed in day two, which is really, I think, so simple and so important is wealth, is caring plus creativity. And that money is just a magnifier of who you are. You can still be creative and you can still be caring. And if you're creative and caring together, you create, can create magic. But the, the thing is that most people, they don't put enough effort in the creativity and in the caring so the magic isn't created. And I want to challenge you to create more magic. And please just write down right now. How can you, what are three to five things that you can do right now to create more magic to the people that you love? Or even better to create magic for people that you don't know. Think about that and write it down. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook to our Facebook page, and I'll see you shortly tomorrow. Have a good day. Thank you.